There is a new Hawkeye, everybody. Yay, I bet you're excited about that. So who is taking up the mantle that shouldn't need to be passed down or taken up by anyone besides the original character? Charlie Ramsey, of course. Who's that, you may be wondering? A non-binary, two-spirit, Native American, they-them character that takes up the mantle after Clint Barton in this timeline decides not to. He even goes as far as to throw his suit and gear in the trash for our new hero to take up. After taking up the mantle, Hawkeye hears a message from Tony Stark and decides that Destiny decided that Ramsey will now be Hawkeye and it's all meant to be. Because, um, why not, right? Feels kinda hallmarky, but that's why Hallmark movies are quick and easy to write and produce, which is what most of these modern comics boil down to as well. It would take too much imagination to make their own original character, and this way they can give said character a bow and not be called racist for giving the Native American character a bow and arrow. Groundbreaking stuff right here. Skirting around stereotypes by adhering to stereotypes but covering it with the skin of a different character. A character we all know at this point, Clint Barton as Hawkeye. <laughs> Ironic, right? This is annoying, honestly. Not because of the pure slop that is this character, existing only to pander with as little effort put into it as possible, but because Marvel has become so lazy at this point that they either make the same character that already exists, but a different gender, race, or sexuality, or they finally come up with original characters and they are the most cringe and insufferable designs, names, and personalities as possible. Y'all remember Safe Space? <laughs> what about Snowflake? Anyone who defends this because all representation is good representation representation has no self-respect or respect for others at all. If you truly believe that being represented by the laziest, pandering, even offensive characters possible just so you can relate to someone that's exactly like you, that's pretty goofy I do have to say. The entire idea of needing someone just like you in order to look up to, relate to, or like a character is pure ego. And the amount of narcissism that takes is beyond on my understanding. I am not a transforming living robot from a planet in space, but I have learned a lot of valuable lessons from Transformers. We are not a flying alien superpowered Chad, but Superman has influenced generations of people. I literally resonated with an elderly goose to the point that a quote by him has been cemented into my memory banks. The wild robot is worth a watch for him alone, but I digress. These are relatable characters, not because they look like me or have my sexuality or my race, my gender, my politics, my culture, my backstory, or even my species, but because they are good characters first and foremost. If I was to be represented as who I am in media, then I would probably want said representation to either be good or to be funny. I would want them to be original but to be respectful. No matter how much I love Batman. I would never want to take up his mantle and make it so Bruce Wayne was never him. That's crazy. It disrespects the original character and makes no sense unless I have a strikingly similar backstory to explain why I would dress up like a bat and beat people up, which again is lazy. But everyone wants to treat this like some kind of war. Everyone on one side hates this character because they are expected to. Then the other side will defend it to their death because that's what they are expected to do. With so little people in between actually deciding to use their own opinions and their own intelligence when making these decisions. All the chos are gonna act totally normal when they see this. All the so-called fans are gonna come out of the woodwork now. Wait till the left to see this hill to die on. And yet almost none of those people can have even a slightly intellectual conversation on why they feel why they do. They also make themselves look bad and then throw out insults once they're back into a corner and have no idea what to say next. Which is such a middle school behavior, but I digress. And yes, this can be applied to people on both sides. I agree with that Andy Pants gaming guy on some things. I have agreed with Synthetic Man on a couple things as well, but they are both prime examples of guys that have no idea what they're talking about 90% of the time. 
time. They pander to their audience, grift off the hatred that they themselves help perpetuate, and then whenever they are tasked with actually having a good conversation, we get the entire debate between Andy and Ackman. Then we see true callers afterwards, like abusing the copyright system, and then claiming victimhood like Andy has been doing. <laughs> Which is really funny given the fact that Andy would be the first person to call someone out for being a victim, which is the very thing he's doing here. That's how you know that they're grifting. And I've grown tired of this. Just make original characters, put them in the appropriate aged media for the characters that you create, and then accept criticism without throwing a temper tantrum and accusing everyone of every phobia you can use to try and demonize them. Due to the lack of funds, I have yet to read any of the comics in the Ripiverse, even though if you follow my Twitter accounts, you can see I have supported them to the ends of the earth and back. That's because I believe in Eric July and his crew. I believe they won't prioritize pandering, and instead will write good characters and allow us to relate to them for being good, which I've heard is exactly what they've done. I helped fund a comic called Ghost of the Badlands, or probably better described as a graphic novel. It's really good, and regardless of the political aisle that Razor Fist or the Rageaholic, whatever you know him as, is on, it's still pretty apolitical from beginning to end as far as I can recall. I definitely recommend giving it a read, and may make a review on it in the future if anyone is interested. I just don't want to give out too much about what the book's about or give out any spoilers or anything that would degrade the experience if you went out and read it, so I gotta figure out the best way to do that. The state of the comic book industry is whatever you decide it to be. Fund bad comics, buy bad comics, bad comics will be made. If lazy makes money, then why work hard? Put your money to use in funding books that genuinely care about the experience of the reader no matter who they may be, instead of whether it can make headlines by being either too inclusive or as inclusive as there has been since yada 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 yada. The gayest Star Wars. The gayest Marvel show. It never ceases to be cringe and demonstrate where priorities lie, which is why those very shows that go out of their way and talk about how inclusive they are never really have too much under the surface of that. Oh look, these characters are gay, but who are they as characters, most likely stereotypes. Stereotypes that actual gay people don't want to be perpetuated. Like, what's his name, Eric from Sex Education, I think? It's characters like that that do more harm than good, but because all representation is good representation for a lot of you people, you are just okay with bad representation all over the place, no matter how it affects the bottom line. There is no reason for this Hawkeye to exist. It could have been an original character with original abilities that truly changes the landscape of superheroes as we know it. A good character with good writing could even change some of the public's opinion on non-binary characters in adult-oriented superhero comics. Instead, we got this. Something that is just gonna split the fan base even more and make it so less and less people would be willing to see some non-binary representation in the future no matter how good those characters would be. Right now, you're setting a precedent for every time that I hear a character is going to be non-binary, I'm not going to be too happy. And that's not something that has changed over the years. It was set with freaking Snowflake and Save Space. It's being set here now, even though the character isn't even original. Oh, but they have an original name and their backstory might be different. They are literally a character named Hawkeye with the abilities of Hawkeye in a suit similar to Hawkeye's. I mean, you can't really call it original at this point, especially whenever it's a big league to get it to the point that this character would ever even get into the position where they would become Hawkeye to begin with. But I'm not gonna sit here and rewrite the comics that this character has been in, even though I've put myself through the torture of reading some of them, and they're just fine. They're fine. They're not good. They're not overly terrible. Honestly, they might not even be fine. They might be more on the bad side, but they're not something I'm gonna sit over here and say are absolutely trash and should never be read. But they're not anything to the point that they're gonna be memorable either. If this character disappeared, I doubt anyone would really care whether they're the ones advocating for its existence or not. Anyway, this was a little bit all over the place, but it was a rant, what can I say? I just wanted to rant a little bit, so that's what I did. Feel free to disagree in the comments below, but for more news, reviews, and whatever we choose, stay tuned.
Canard's feed. Have a great day. Thank you.